Hi there. Now for the next part, part C, we need to obtain a second equation and hence find the value of mu and the value of sigma for four marks. And just to recap, remember in the first part here, part B, we had to show that mu equaled 154 plus 1.6449 sigma. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment then to uh, pause the video. When you come back, I'll run through the work solution or you can fast forward to the end. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So to do this, this follows basically much the same method as we did for the first part here in B. Only this time I'm looking at the fact that 30% of the women are taller than 172 centimetres. So if I've got that, then the 172 is going to be over this side, say somewhere in there. This value here, this observed value, which I'll call x1, is going to be 172. And this area to the right of it, which is greater than 172, is going to be 30%, 0.3 or 0 0.30. And what we do then is we project this down onto our standardized graph here and we're looking for this particular z value which I'll call z1. And this area here to the right of z1 is also an area of 0 0.30. So that means then that if we just come down here it means that we know that Z1, but therefore Z1, is equal to the observed value using this result here, which is 172, minus the mean, which is mu, divided by the standard deviation, sigma. And again, we need to get Z1 from tables. So if we look at a set of tables, I've got an extract here. Okay, which give us the probability of being more than a given value of z, then we're looking for 0 0.30. And this is an easy one because when p is 0 0.30, it's on the right side here, so we don't have to change the sign of this. It's just going to be 0.5244. So we've got that z1 okay, equals 0.5244. And we can substitute that into this equation here. And so therefore that's going to give us 0.5244 is equal to 172 minus mu then divided by sigma. And it's just a question of rearranging this now. So I'm going to multiply both sides by sigma. So you've got 0.5244 times sigma equals 172 minus mu. And then if I add mu to both sides and subtract this term from both sides, we end up with mu equaling 172 minus 0.5244 sigma. Okay, so that's our second equation. We've got this equation up here, which I'll number one. And we've got this new equation here, which I'll number equation two. And it's a question now of just solving these two equations simultaneously. Now I haven't got much room, so I'm going to just remove this and we'll carry on solving these two equations. And to do this, I think the best way would be just to take equation two and from that we'll subtract one. So we'll do equation two, subtract equation one. Obviously, it's not the only way we can solve these simultaneous equations. I'll leave it up to you. But if we do it this way, we've got mu, take away mu, which is 0, equals 172 minus 154, that's 18. And then you've got minus 0.5244 sigma minus plus 1.6449 sigma. And that's going to give you minus 2.1693 sigma. 
And again, if we just rearrange this now, say we add 2.1693 sigma to both sides, then that will equal 18, then divide by the 2.1693, we end up with sigma equaling 18 divided by 2.1693, and that gives us 8.2976, and so on. I won't round this up yet, because I'm going to be using this in a moment in one of these equations, because we need to get mu. So I'm going to substitute this. It obviously doesn't matter which one you sub it in. I'm going to sub it in equation 1. If I do that, we therefore have mu equaling 154 plus 1.6449 multiplied by sigma, which is 8.2976 and so on. Okay, If you work that out, you end up with 167.648 and so on. So We'll give our answers to three significant figures. So that means that mu will be 168, okay, to three significant figures, 3SF. And when it comes to sigma, sigma is going to be equal to 8.30 to three significant figures. Okay, a bit of a squash there, but I hope you can see that.